I'm assuming you're not ready for bed. Even though it's 945. A good morning, fam. It's a great day. Welcome to Wednesday. Welcome Wednesday. Welcome Wednesday. We uh, we just <laughs> finished uh, Bible study. We decided that we're gonna start studying our Bibles together each day, hopefully, because both of us, I think, have been somewhat inconsistent in it. Um, I kind of keep up with it. But mo to be honest, it's mostly because a day in the Word keeps me really accountable. Um, and so now we're just going to start going through it together. And so today we went through Matthew chapter 26. And Sweeper wanted to share our biggest takeaways. So you want to tell yours? So one of my biggest takeaways is um, right at the beginning of the chapter, verses like 1 through 5. Um, it talks about how Jesus um, has sort of like a meeting with his disciples. And he basically tells them like, you know... I'm going to be delivered to be crucified and like this is what's going to happen and then the next paragraph is talking about the chief priests and Caiaphas who are plotting together to have a meeting you're a little close plotting together to have a meeting about how they're going to get Jesus and we just John made a really good point of like look at Jesus's meeting that's like he's very honest and open with his disciples it's like in the light, you know, like they're having that meeting. And then, boom, you go right to the contrast of this Caiaphas meeting where they're, you know, talking about, okay, well, we can't take him during the feast because people are going to be mad and like manipulative, sort of in the dark. I imagine them like huddled in a back room, like they know they're doing something wrong. And so just this idea that like, you know, when you're talking about something, is this a meeting that's open and in the light and you'd feel comfortable being open and honest with it? Or do you find yourself like kind of in a dark room talking about things and being manipulative and you know like what sort of conversations are you having it's a really good way to judge your motives in a conversation too i think and then john my biggest takeaway came from um when it talks about i think it's verses 14 through 16 where it talks about judas judas iscariot being the one who would betray him he goes to the chief priests and the elders and they pay him you know 30 coins and I think it's really easy for us to look at that and be like, bad Judas, you're a bad dude. I would never, ever be like Judas. But if you look at the section directly before it, it's the woman who pours out the alabaster jar, which we talked a lot about today, how the main point for us of that passage is that this woman did, made a sacrificial act to give something to Jesus, to serve him in a sacrificial way. And then right back to back with that, you have Judas going to the chief priests and constantly throughout the gospels we see that Judas is only looking for what he can get out of his relationship with Jesus. So you have this woman who is only seeking to give to Jesus and then you have Judas who is only seeking to get from Jesus. And I think that so often in our relationships with God, we look at instead of how can I serve God's kingdom, we look at how does my relationship with God serve my purposes? Not how I can serve Jesus, but how Jesus can serve me. We're a lot more like Judas than we give ourselves credit for in that way, so. Preaching to open up the morning. <laughs> uh, now we got, I got a full day of work ahead, sweet bear. How do you study the Bible? That just gave away all of a day in the word for next week. Well, I'm curious, how do you study the Bible? Do you do it with a friend? Do you do it like in the morning? Do you do it with a day in the word, the internet's favorite Bible study? Anyway, there's this construction going on behind this wall. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know where it's... I, it sounds like it's behind this wall, but I really don't know where it's coming no, from. because the elevator is behind this wall. It and sounds like it's kind of outside, too. So loud, and it's still so windy. I almost fell over this morning. I cannot describe to you how intense this wind is. Can you hear that? I'm trying to show... Like, look at these trees. I'm waiting for a good gust. I'm telling you, this wind has been going on for how long? Three days. Three days? And then it rose from the grave. What's going on here? The Buckets gets very jealous of laptops. Very jealous of laptops. Isn't that right, Tubba?
Ah, hey team, it's later. I'm currently sitting, I probably can't see. I'm currently sitting on our poof, our new poof. It's quite comfortable. And this way, Sweet Bear and I can converse from across the room. Sweet Bear, how was your day? You're not talking? Mm -mm. I'm mute. That's interesting. <laughs> I just heard you speak, so our new mirror is still doing well, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice to have, actually. I'm not sure what he's doing. Oh, <laughs> always wants to play. This one always wants to play. I'm assuming you're not ready for bed. Even though it's 9.45. What? <laughs> I think it's just because I really look forward to our snuggle with buckets and watching friends. It's like my favorite part of the day. I love it too, but then you fall asleep like that and you leave me in this terrible sunken place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm such a. What do you call? What do you call? It? What's the opposite of an early riser? A late? A no, I'm an early better. What do you call that? Just not a night person. So the evening is almost over and we were gearing up to go to bed when we turned into the bedroom and saw. So anyway, Buckets is going to help us with these and then we're going to go to sweeps. Finish us off. Keep it awesome.